Welcome back to the Emory Healthcare 500 and make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. And we also want to remind you here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, it's your car, it's your drive, and it's your chance to win. Enter for a chance to meet a Team Chevy driver and win your favorite Chevrolet at winyourchevy.com. Just a few moments ago during the break, another lead change. Our second, Denny Hamlin, got around Ryan Newman. Here's how it happened. You see Hamlin still stuck to the bottom of the racetrack. Newman's been pretty much married to that top. It's like his handling started going away. You can see Hamlin making some time up on him, but made a nice clean pass there on the bottom coming down the front straightaway. And we'll go through cycles, you know, where your car will be good. You'll have a section of the run that you'll be good. Other sections you won't. They've now slowed down three seconds from their fastest lap time of the race. Yeah, and Newman's under attack for second spot. And remember, he's fighting for a chance to get into the chase. Kyle Busch right now is, of course, third in the points and basically secure. And Got a little twitch there, which allows Newman to hold on to the spot. But so important for Ryan to stay up front. Of course, Denny Hamlin in front of both of these guys. He wants to get those bonus points for picking up his sixth win. That'd be 60 bonus points going into the yeah Jake's teammate there, Kyle Busch, who just took over that second spot. He's looking for more bonus points, too, to close up on that. He would like to get within 10 of that. So you have all of these guys racing for different reasons here tonight and trying to and what they're trying to accomplish. You see him going around the 87 of uh, Joe Nemechek. Right now, Joe running in 39th position. We have a total of 36 cars on the lead lap. Everybody's still out on the racetrack. All right, let's check in on Kurt Busch, our in-race reporter, because, uh, you know, he's won here three different occasions. But uh, right now, he's mired in 28th position. What's going on, Jamie Little? Well, he has already lost 16 positions. You can imagine he's not a happy camper. This was his radio transmission just a few moments ago. Hi, entry and everywhere. the end of that he said we're like blow out the right front tight and they were tight in practice so Steve Addington his crew chief told me we're loosening this up for the start of the race it didn't help Marty yeah Jamie I talked to Addington uh, before the race his crew chief he said they did loosen this car they had been tight made some changes made he told me a few like three different changes they made to try to free it up it makes it difficult when these guys have to practice. Their practice session yesterday was in the middle of the day. And so a lot of times you'll have a loose race car then you tighten it up too much. But they apparently were the other side and still just haven't gotten it freed up enough. How about ninth, 10th and 11th on your screen right now is Greg Biffles on that high line. Clint Boyer and A.J. Allmendinger down low. Allmendinger is one that's really charging through here. Watching these lap times, he's running some really quick times. Yeah, Biffle, Casey Kane's teammate is also. Yeah, and Biffle's doing a nice job. He's just totally on that top side. I love the way that Biffle gets into the corner high, too, and can turn his car in the center and get a nice run off. Dave? And, DJ, didn't it make you mad when you knew you had a great car and just blew a qualifying lap? Oh, yeah. Did that and, a few times. Well, he started 15th tonight. As we look at Paul Menard working underneath David Reagan on your left there, Biffle on the top right, he qualified 15th by just getting back to the gas a little early coming out of turn two. It caused the car to push to the wall. He thought he might have had a pole run. Now he's earning all that back up into the top 10, and Biffle thinks he has a really great car for tonight. Also, take a look at that 29 car on the left side of your screen running in about 16th position right now. Our points leader, Kevin Harvick. Remember, he's pulling his usual tricks on us, you know, sort of lurking in the back. Didn't have a great qualifying effort. In fact, uh, started the race 29th, but here he is up to 16th. Yeah, when I was talking to Kevin yesterday, he was really happy with his car and race trim. He thought it might be a little bit too tight in the center for night. They were going to try to work on it there. He actually thought he was going to get a better qualifying effort than he did. I tell you what, guys, Kevin Harvick, last night, he was one of the fastest cars in the nationwide race, and you got to believe that he's learned a lot about how this track is going to transition today, tonight, and what type of air pressure settings and things like that, and also chassis adjustments he's going to do. I would say, out of everybody out there, Kevin Harvick is the one with the most experience of what this racetrack is going to do, besides Jamie McMurray, who actually won the race last night. I think it was a big benefit understanding how big the track will change. Yeah, even though the cars are a lot different. They still run on the same tire on the same track. So you can learn things from that nationwide race that will carry over. 
Battle for the 13th spot with Jeff Gordon under attack from Paul Menard. Menard down low, and here comes Kevin Harvick right behind. Yeah, Jeff's trying to make that high line work, but you, you can see he's not right up against the wall like Biffle is all the way through. He's giving himself a little bit more room. That tells me his car's probably a little bit on the tight side and that he's having to give himself some more room until they can make some adjustments on this car. Jeff Gordon coming back on the 29. Will he have enough to retake the spot? They're heading down the back stretch into three. Well, you see that battle right there. What I saw out of Kevin Harvick's car coming up off that corner on the bottom, how much power you have to have to be able to hold somebody off like that. That really shows up how good the engines are in these RCR cars. So we've been lean, mean, and green here, completing 38 of the 325 laps in our event presented by Pennzoil tonight. Tony Stewart right now, he's running in third place, just four seconds behind our race leader, Kyle Busch, and his Toyota teammate up front. We've completed 44 laps under green. The crews are getting ready for the first of what could be 10 pit stops. And everybody's stretching, getting ready. Look at this. How about warming up with a tire? I warm up with a lot less weight than that. The pressure is about to be on because green flag pit stops in last night's nationwide race were crucial. And the guys are on the wall. And four cars, we can tell you, have already pulled behind the wall. Kevin Conway, Mike Bliss, Joe Nemechek, Michael McDowell. First taker on the pit road, Sam Hornish Jr. as he pulls down. He's already one lap down. We've got 31 cars right now on the lead lap. David? Tight center, loose off for Sam. They had a really, really good car here in the spring, one of the best until they lost a cylinder midway through that race and had to settle for a disappointing finish. So far tonight, not too bad on the handling side for this Penske race car. His best finish this year back at Pocono when he came home 11th. He's back out underway. Race leader, still Denny Hamlin. Let's go down to Dr. Jerry Bunch. Marcus Ambrose, very, very loose in the corner. Car sliding sideways in the right rear. Has absolutely no grip. They have already made a chassis adjustment. He will fill it up with some Oco fuel. Air pressure change. He is away. Jamie. And remember, we talked about Kurt Busch, how terribly tight he was. He even brushed the wall just a couple of laps ago. The call adjustment air pressure and four tires for the blue deuce per push saw him two turns on the wrench left side's going on kurt with 13.3 seconds yeah made a good stop you'll see a lot of the cars that are about to go a lap down at the yeah that'll try to get in here early before you see the leaders come but here comes some of the leaders yeah third place tony stewart's coming down pit road Casey Kane, Ryan Newman. As you also look at Reed Sorensen and his pit stop. Let's go to Dave Burns. Marty Tony Stewart was running third. He'll get a track bar adjustment on that race car. Not bad, he said, but he wants to work on the exit of the corner. That was a little bit loose. To get the wrench twice, a wedge adjustment as well. Rick Pigeon, the catch can man, reaches over, puts that wrench through the window, and he is out of here. 13.4, another good stop. Greg Biffle stop. The Greg's car is handling pretty well. You don't see any chassis adjustments going on. Maybe an air pressure adjustment. A lot of cars right now. Juan Pablo Montoya is in. There you see A.J. Allmendinger finishing his service. 48 is also in, Doc. Jimmy Johnson started back in seventh, drove it to fourth, and the car got very, very tight, would not turn. They made a chassis adjustment both left and right rear. Air pressure change. Great pit stop. Jimmy's away. Dave. The 29 team of Kevin Harvick is that's a close call on the right ear screen. Looking for a small adjustment. He was plowing at the beginning, but just losing a little rear grip at the end of that run. So a slight adjustment for our points leader, Kevin Harvick, at this point. Lap 49, green flag pit stops, Mike. And Kyle Busch taking his cues from his teammate, Denny Hamlin. If he came, he was going to do the same thing. You saw he had to lock up the tires to head down pit road. Kyle very happy with his race car, a little bit tight to begin with, but it starts to free up. He's happy. A four-tire change, Jamie. And your leader, Denny Hamlin, said, wow, that was exciting getting off of the track surface. He says he's actually been loose. A lot of the cars saying they're tight. They took air pressure out and made a track bar adjustment. You see him get second down to the 18. Jamie McMurray, meanwhile, is in. He's been riding around. The car has not been exactly what he's wanted. A chassis adjustment, four tires, fill it up with fuel. But Jamie McMurray, who sits just outside the top 12 coming into this race. Saw Jeff Gordon finishing up his work going out as well. 13.8 on the stop of McMurray. 
and we're getting word that McMurray missed the commitment cone the first time. That track is so slick and these tires are gone that these drivers are having a hard time getting down on pit road. You see coming off this banking right here, the track's extremely slick. Yeah, it's really hard. You're trying to carry as much speed you're, well, minute, you're going almost 200 miles an hour around this track and trying to do that. Too fast entering for the 18 of Kyle Busch. He is going to have to do a pass through. I was going to comment on how much time he made up on Denny Hamlin. Apparently, uh, he did it getting on to pit road. Had to be one of those early segments because he had already pulled up to the back bumper of Denny Hamlin early on pit road. So uh, for him to get one and Denny not to get one means it had to happen early on on pit road. So tough break for Kyle. He's going to have to come down and do the pass through. He is shown as the race leader right now, but that's all for naught. Denny Hamlin, Tony Stewart, Martin Truex Jr. Well, they're going to put the black flag with the white cross the next time by if he doesn't come in. That means they quit scoring you. Let's you go see, back. Yeah, right here. He makes up a lot, but you can see Denny's really on the brakes. That but first you can see segment. Kyle, yeah, that yep. first segment, he didn't get slowed back down enough. Well, he got the message because here he comes down through pit road, and we'll see where this brings him back out into the mix. Remember, he was shown as the race leader. Trying to hang it out to see if I can get a caution. Now he's just going to have to, you know, take his medicine right here. Long race, got a great car. Leader right now is in the middle of the back stretch. Total of 30 cars still on the lead lap. Yeah, and he has a fast enough car. This isn't going to be devastating to his night because this is a racetrack, as we've seen, with a good race car, you can pass a lot of cars. I'll just have to keep his wits about him, which he can do and make the most of the night. He can still end up in victory lane. Very easy. Long, long race here tonight. He comes back out, now shown in 23rd position, 22 seconds behind race leader and teammate. Well, you see Tony Stewart now the leader. He yeah. pitted just a lap before those uh, two Bush brothers, and that's what got him this lead here. So Tony Stewart becomes our fourth different leader with four lead changes here at the Emory 500 presented by Pennzoil.